you are listening to Durian ASEAN, the voice of discovery and sharing. Uh, today we have a very interesting guest from, um, um, <clears throat> sorry, we have a very interesting guest. He's an activist and he's passionate on the issues regarding on the poor. And with me is uh, Hussein Muhammad S. How are you? Uh, hi, hi Alin. I'm good. How are you? Oh, okay. I'm fine too. Okay, so today we will be discussing on a topic that is... Uh, it, that was a bit controversial a few weeks back. It's about the homeless people. And today we are just going to discuss about how is it like to be homeless in KL, meaning in Kuala Lumpur. So you've been uh, on the ground prior to this and you've been working with um, a lot of people to sort of understand and provide services towards these people who are homeless in Kuala Lumpur. So what is your experience? Maybe you can share a bit of your background on this. Uh, well, <clears throat> um, right now I'm with a group called uh, Region of Love. Uh, we concentrate uh, very much on the area of um, uh, Chowkit, uh, Klang and uh, Kota Raya. <clears throat> <clears throat> well, uh, like, like many people, I, I have been you know, quite exposed by poverty ever since I, I was a kid. I, I grew up uh, witnessing it, and I think I understand it. But the, the lack of discussion on, on poverty in the nation's tongue, you know, as, as well as the sheer numbers, uh, these are what piqued my interest in the subject. Um, well, of course, homelessness is, is related to poverty, and, and poverty is nature is very oppressive, you know. Why? Because uh, the victims of poverty are dependent upon the mercy of others, for example. And uh, poverty creates fear, the fear of uh, becoming poor, which in turn you know, causes uh, one to perpetuate violence and uh, immorality. So why should people you know, fight poverty? Because it's, it's a moral calling. If we are sitting around and uh, watching, we are no good than you know, the, the person that purposely perpetuates uh, poverty on the people. So this is what you know. Uh, <clears throat> one of the reasons that you know uh, that uh, motivated me to, to fight homelessness. So, in the context of Kuala Lumpur, why there are many homeless people? <clears throat> well, uh, it happens mostly in uh, in a well-developed city. Of course, you know we see people desperate to make ends meet. People who are uh, locked out of both the labor market and the housing market, you know, often without even a place they can call home. We see a housing market that is uh, well, notoriously bad at providing uh, affordable housing for low-income families and individuals. So, yeah, <clears throat> people are homeless because they cannot afford homes. <laughs> it's, it's <laughs> that. Yeah, and the economic system uses up humans in order to gain the greatest uh, profit possible. Once no more profit can be had, the person is, you know, tossed aside. Those that have been tossed aside, they become the poorest of the poor, which are the homeless people. And then, of course, you have people from rural areas uh, migrating because they believe in making money, but uh, they end up being in a worse condition because the situation in urban cities are far worse than, you know, where they came from. People who are uh, living in rural areas, uh, we can say that they are poor, but uh, the condition of living is not as bad as how it is in the, in, in the urban cities. Mm -hmm. In the past, do do you um, maybe from your experience or your your peers' experience, do you see a lot of homeless people compared to now, and why is that so? Yes, we do see a lot of uh, homeless people. Um, <clears throat> well, uh, back then, of course, you know, uh, I, I I did not see it as an activist because uh, I got involved in. Uh, in, in activism, in, in helping the homelessness, you know, uh, uh, f quite recently. But uh, <clears throat> you, you can always, you know, tell the difference because uh, Kuala Lumpur is very near to your heart. You know, it's, you, you know, uh, many of us are, you know, born in this uh, around this area. Uh, back then, you do see uh, homeless people. Uh, you know, you, you do have people who come and you know uh, to, to bag. Uh, people who sleep in the streets, and you know, uh, <clears throat> but uh, the the numbers keep increasing, and then <clears throat> you have uh, many other areas which uh, are now <clears throat> becoming the spot for homeless people to to stay. Because, uh, for example, if they are disturbed in some other areas, then you know you you have these people are uh, going to another area, then becoming that uh, you know that uh, they are they are their chosen uh, spot. 
and uh, the number is increasing because, well, to, to make it very simple, because population itself is increasing, mm-hmm. and then uh, the the <clears throat> the housing price is uh, increasing. Uh, the city is getting more dense, you know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so people, uh, you know, uh, even the middle class people are no longer being able to, you know, uh, to afford housing. So th- there's always this uh, struggle. Uh, there's always this uh, struggle. Uh, for example, in and cheaper Kuala homes Kuala. are actually mainly on the outskirts of Kuala Lumpur. Like, how do you make sense to travel like two, three, uh, like uh, two uh, more than two hours to just go to work? It would make more sense if you can sleep on the street and go to work the next day. If uh, you know those people have uh, some of them, I think probably they may have uh, jobs to have to do. Yeah, which is especially true for the homeless people because uh, you know the traveling uh, is uh, there's a lot of expenses in traveling. So what these people do, those who are staying outside, they come and try to stay in Kuala Lumpur, and these are uh, you know uh, migrant people from the rural areas or people who are just uh, trying to uh, make ends meet for the family. They have to come and then they have to stay in Kuala Lumpur, which then you know result in them. Uh, trying to uh, live in um, re- rental house hotels mm-hmm. and yeah, which is very much expensive, and then they discover themselves not being able to support themselves after that. So many of them are just stuck. You know, they they didn't they don't want to face uh, their family back at home. You know, uh, they just can't afford to go back to to home. So this is w- the reason why those people are still around. Mm-hmm. But there are many other reasons, of course. But what about? The views of uh, this woman, family, and community development minister, Dato Sri Rohani Abdul Karim, she said that uh, NGOs, uh, I guess she's targeting NGOs like you, uh, you guys, should refrain from spoiling, uh, quote unquote, the homeless. Um, do you think you are spoiling the homeless by, you know, g- g- uh, going to the ground and providing services and food to them? <laughs> <clears throat> the homeless people had always been there. I mean, even before uh, the NGOs are, you know, uh, <clears throat> you know, even before the amount of NGOs came up to, to what it is today. Uh, but back then, you know, nothing was being done about the homeless people anyway. So, not even the government? Yeah, not very much. You know, <clears throat> you you have a very few um, you have a very few assistance coming from uh, the government. Uh, so when people see this, you know, they decide that something needs to be done about it. Today, uh, there is a need to feed the homeless people. It's because if if the NGOs don't do that, then who will? You know, so <clears throat> this is why the NGOs are there. And the numbers are increasing because of other factors, because of, uh, you know, the, 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 the increase in uh, the, the cost of living and then... Um, the, the failure of the government itself to, to curb the issue in the first place is not because of the NGOs. The NGOs are there to help. If, if the NGOs don't do that, the situation is not going to get, uh, you know, the situations are going to get much more worse. I, I'm not sure how the government is going to, you know, uh, going to help the people. Mm-hmm. And uh, if the, if the uh, you know, if nobody feeds them, for example, you know, this is just going to result uh, them in, you know, might being able to... Uh, you know, to, to, to get involved into crime uh, for the means of survival because it's not easy for them to get jobs. Uh, there, there, there are many reasons why they are there on the streets, you know. So many of them will take, um, many of them will resort to crime to, to, to you know, to, because they believe that they can help the issue, uh, to solve the situation. For mm-hmm. them. But, you know, Prime Minister Najib Raza also went down the ground and visited all these homeless people just to show that, I guess... To show that the government really care about the people, but what is your view on this? Uh, were you there when he went down to visit the homeless? Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> uh, well he, he should have. Uh, you know, <laughs> I mean, honestly, you know, anyone uh, in the government, you know, they, they should be. Uh, he should have been doing that earlier, not when the situation uh, becomes an issue, uh, and then you know you come down, uh, you bring a lot of photographers with you, you ask what's happening, and then you, you know, you behave like, uh, you know, it's something which is very shocking for you, because homelessness happens in the, you know, in, in the heart of the city, you know, everyone is well aware of it, you know, the politicians need to be more aware of that, 
No, uh, we focus much on development, investment uh, inside the city, but we do not really care about what's happening to the people over there. So if the government would have, you know, uh, looked into this matter earlier, it wouldn't create this situation. You know, um, there wouldn't be an issue of, uh, you know, the Guatnan giving some statements which are not Yeah, proper. the infamous statement. Yeah, you know, they would have known better how to deal with it, how to, you know, how to talk about the issue, in other words. But they, they mentioned that they are dealing this with the OPS CASE and, of course, the rehabilitation, uh, the rehab program for the homeless. But at the same time, they are saying that, you know, we are providing all these services, but the homeless is not participating. So it is their problem, it's not our problem. It's, did you, will you agree in that, with that? First of all, of course, we cannot say that the homeless people must be, you know, so, uh, anyhow uh, placed in the shelter because they do have the right to either choose to, you know, to live in the shelter or not. You know, a right which we cannot deny them. The government needs to be more, uh, you know, they, they need to know more about this, you know, the rights of the homeless people. Uh, and there are a lot of issues with this shelter. You know, if you uh, meet uh, these homeless people in the streets, you know, you ask them, you know, you, you hear uh, very, um, you know, you, you, you hear stories which will, you know, uh, you know, uh, <clears throat> which, which uh, you don't want to, you know, you don't want to hear because uh, people kind of like have uh, trust in these shelters. But uh, when they are telling things like, I would rather be on the street than, you know, be on the shelter, then you know, there is something very much uh, wrong about uh, what is happening in the shelters over there, or what, you know, uh, in their administration, about the volunteers that work there, about, sorry, the people are paid, actually. Uh, you know, so <clears throat> the shelter doesn't uh, solve the issue. The homeless people, they have the right to housing, you know, and housing mm -hmm. rights equally important as education and health. Mm -hmm. People need to be serious about that. We need to talk about that uh, on, a, on a national level. So uh, what is being done by by the government or, you know, uh, probably you know, in collaboration with the corporate people, uh, the housing developers, to, to help the situation? We cannot rely on shelters forever anyway. Mm -hmm. um, so if you cannot rely on shelters uh, anyway, what do you think that the government should do uh, in terms of trying to understand the homeless and to to sort of like uh, create this policy that is not based on perception but is based on the reality on the ground. Well, the government they need to be like I said, you know, they need to be more serious about um, about uh, dealing with poverty. You know, they need to be more serious about uh, dealing with issues like the housing price, the cost of living. And then uh, uh, this uh, government apparatus like uh, Pusat Saka and Baitul Mal, they need to go down into the streets and they, they need to, you know, they need to work like how the NGOs are working. You know, they need to uh, probably, they need to even, you know, uh, conduct food distribution mm -hmm. by going from place to place. What is the current situation when it comes to the welfare methods of the government, regardless whether it is from the Islamic side, which is the zakat and baitumal, and or the the conventional side, which is the welfare department and all that? Well, uh, sorry, your question again. Uh, so, what is the met the the current method methodology that the government is doing in terms of providing welfare to the people? What why it, it is not enough, regardless whether it is the the Islamic or uh, the, the the zakat or the baitumal or the uh, welfare department. Well, uh, these people, of course, they wait for the homeless people to come and apply to them, and then there's a lot of uh, bureaucracy over there. There's a lot of uh, you know uh, procedures over there, a lot of forms to be filled, and then the homeless people, those who are very much determined to you know to to receive the uh, the assistance. They will, you know, they will be patient and go through the process, but uh, it takes a lot of time, and then uh, some of them are not educated enough to, you know, even deal with the forms. I have cases where people just, you know, look at the forms and then uh, they ask for assistance from the uh, from the Baitulmal people, and nobody is willing to help them. And they just go home, you know, leaving everything to, <laughs> you know, to, to fade after that. So uh, these people are being told to come back uh, after a few months 
or being told to come back uh, almost uh, you know uh, every week where they have a problem with uh, uh, transportation expenses after that uh, which just you know makes them uh, you know it 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 it, it, it doesn't uh, really help in in terms of um, <clears throat> Many of them, they just get tired of it, and then they simply uh, forget about it. Mm-hmm. So, uh, what we are facing here is a um, is uh, the the government uh, institutions are not very much, uh, you know, they they, they are not uh, very much willing to go down to the streets. I mean, NGOs who you know go down to the streets almost every night, mm-hmm. uh, they, they they witness uh, this themselves. The government people comes once in a while when there is a festive season, you, uh, you know, like uh, the Ramadan, for example. Then you have these, you know, uh, vans and all these coming from the uh, from the government apparatus, uh, where they come up with a program and then they make a lot of, uh, you know, uh, publicity about it. But they should be there every day. They should be working just just like how the NGOs do. They should be going out and finding for the people instead of waiting for the people to come to them. You know, mm-hmm. so. Yeah, in in, uh, in one way where the this government uh, uh, <clears throat> this government organizations can work with people is that people can help by you know uh, highlighting uh, the issues that they see and then bringing it uh, to the government uh, bodies so that the government bodies will you know uh, uh, take the case and then uh, what people can do also is you know to follow up to make sure that these cases are being resolved with because many of those things that go to the government bodies, uh, they are just left over there. You know, the people get tired dealing with the government and it's uh, completely forgotten. Or some people are just, uh, you know, (coughs) being told that uh, they are not, uh, uh, they are not, uh, what's the word for it, you know, they, uh, the the requirements doesn't feel for them to be uh, assisted and then, uh, why why they are not, um, um, they, they, they do, they do not fulfill the criteria to be assisted. Like, what what are the reasons that the welfare department usually would give? Uh, some of them, you know, they uh, like the Pusat Zakat, for example. They can say that you know, uh, you know, you do not uh, fulfill the requirement of uh, asna, for example. Um, for, for example, if we say like, um, <clears throat> you know. Uh, that, like this is this case where uh, the people has not been uh, homeless long enough, or um, this uh, kind of assistance uh, like Baitulma gives, for example, where you know you you pay the rental for the homeless people. Uh, <clears throat> so the house needs to be there in the first place. So there is a problem over there when you know the uh, deposit amount uh, is required for them to uh, pay for the house in order to get in the house in the first place. So when the homeless people have uh, this, uh, this issue of uh, coming up with a deposit itself to pay for the house, then uh, there's pretty much you know, nothing that uh, Baikuma can do about it because they will only help with the monthly rental. So these are the kind of examples. And then... Um, uh, some people do not uh, fulfill the criteria of, uh, you know, being uh, disabled. Some people are just um, being told that, uh, you know, so there are cases, for example, where some people only receive uh, 50 ringgit for a year. That's not going to help much. You know, what is 50 ringgit coming from the Pusat Zakat? Uh, uh, how is it going to help them? There, there was a case also. Uh, where uh, once I met uh, someone uh, somewhere near the uh, Putra LRT, where you know I talked to him, and then he said that uh, uh, there was uh, the, when he asked for uh, bantuan zakat, uh, he was supposed to receive uh, 100 ringgit, uh, but uh, on the receipt, I mean sorry, in the in the receipt was written as 100 ringgit, but he only received 50 ringgit. So th- there are these kind of cases as well. So we're dealing with a lot of uh, you know uh, issues here, where. Uh, there are some uh, shady things happening in the Pusat Zakat itself. Uh, a lot of homeless people are talking about it. I think uh, somebody needs to go down. Somebody needs to investigate all that. Government officials, uh, you know, who are uh, who are uh, guarding these you know uh, these uh, institutions, they need to run a proper audit. They need to run proper checking on what's hap- happening. Uh, you know, within this Pusat, uh, Pusat Zakat or Institute Baitul Mar or any other you know non-religious uh, government bodies which are supposed to help with these issues. Mm-hmm. That's from the government side. What about on the society side? Do you think society care enough about the issues of the homeless, or do they just, just you know, keep 
one eye shut and 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 also do, do you think the society understand the complexity of issues is that is faced by the homeless people i don't think they really understand i mean uh, we are used to that culture where you know uh, we are being told that the homeless people are you know rebel rousers uh, they are we believe that they are dirty you know we try to keep them away uh, we, we keep a distance from them we try to keep them away from our you know from our family from our children uh, because we have that fear of becoming like them also you know we tr- uh, we live in a society which you know um, which uh, worship money so everyone just you know wants to climb the ladder of success people do not want to end up uh, being on the streets which is good but then again you know it, 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 you know, it forms this uh, discrimination towards uh, the poor people uh, like I say they do not understand uh, why the poor people are on the streets we do not also understand that you know we are also uh, uh, you know the contributors towards the situation uh, the economic system is being run by uh, you know, not only the corporate people, but you know, consumers like us, we are actually helping um, to you know contribute towards uh, inequality. You know, we are actually the ones who are uh, stretching this gap between the rich and the poor. And nobody really you know cares about this because as long as people are just you know uh, getting happier, then they are fine. They do not really uh, worry about the situation down there where people are just getting poorer. People are ending up in the streets. Even people from the middle class. Uh, you know, uh, uh, straighter when they are no longer uh, capable of, you know, uh, climbing the ladder of success, you know, no longer ca- capable of running in the race, they also sometimes end up in the streets. Mm-hmm. So people do not understand that this is something which may happen to uh, them as well. So what uh, happens here today is uh, uh, people are just doing this for the sake of charity, for the sake of uh, religion, for example. They think that, oh, if I have uh, more, then why not if I, you know, fork out a little bit of my money from my pocket and give it to them? And then, yeah, that, and then they think that, oh, everything is fine. You know, people, some people believe that, oh, by doing this, you know, they will enter paradise and so on, which is okay, which is their religious belief. But in the long run, it doesn't help. It doesn't help to, you know, to, uh, for you to understand the situation. It doesn't uh, help uh, for, the, for, the, for society to, you know, mm-hmm. uh, to, to, to take part into uh correcting uh, the situations of that. And, uh, of course, nowadays there is a culture of, you know, uh, also coming down into the streets, you know, helping for a day, uh, taking a lot of pictures and then going home, telling others that, oh, you know, we are helping. That, that is not the method of doing things. Uh, by, uh, you know, with all, with all these things happening, uh, this is when you see that nobody really understands the issue of poverty. Nobody really understands, the, the, you know, the, the relation of the, uh, the economic condition and the poor. People just think that the poor, you know, happen to be there just because they are unfortunate. Or some people even think that, you know, those people are lazy, so they deserve to be on the streets. So there's a lot of lack of understanding there, and it, there, there needs to be a lot of, you know, uh, uh, process of, you know, uh, educating uh, the, the society, which should come from the NGOs as well as the government. Mm. Anyway, uh, thank you very much for sharing with us uh, your view and. Uh, all the best with uh, the work that you are doing and we hope that uh, you and other NGO that are working on the ground can help to address this issue uh, together, you know, uh, provide some sort of awareness, especially towards the public on this. So thank you very much. Thanks for speaking so, with us. Well, thank you for the support from, you know, coming from people like you. Thank you so much, Olin. Welcome. Bye.